outlaw, macho, drive in. Um, one of my favorite ECW stars is actually one of my one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, um, Steve Carino. I was um, gonna bring that up. Old Steve Carino. Here. Um, he wrote he he kind of started making a lot of waves right around the time I started watching all the pay per views. I was aware of him in like '99 is when he really started doing like the King of Old School, um, and then like his his program with Dusty Rhodes was great, um, and you know him winning the world title was awesome. Um, he was he he really was like old school feel because the time King of Old School. Him being like a crimson mask worked because if you think of a lot of old school wrestling, if you look at like the territory days, there was a lot of brutality. Um, so that type of gimmick, not uh, not Rhea Ripley's brutality. In... Just... What's that? Not Rhea Ripley's brutality though. Just you know, Cor- correct, correct. Just... There, there was no foot stompings. Yeah, just... um, <laughs> there might have been foot stompings, um, <laughs> but that type of gimmick worked perfect in ECW because you take especially coming off of like you know years earlier of like throwing down the NWA title ECW was about breaking from tradition you had this guy coming in basically showed everybody that tradition still ran through ECW and that was the genius of Steve Carino was he was basically saying you know hey professional wrestling outside of WWF, even though they had blood, you know, in the late nineties, WWF is like the company that never was really pushing it. NWA, you know, Crocker promotions stuff, they would be pushing it. Steve Carino had that legit old school feel. He was sure smaller than the guys back in, you know, the territory days, but he still seemed like he would have fit in there at that period as like maybe a tag wrestler or something. So him in ECW, his promos were excellent. Um, and he like started doing the same type of stuff in Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. It was pure gold. Um, his matches with Just Incredible um, and like Jerry Lynn are underrated. Um, honestly, he, I think he got the best work out of Just Incredible, in my opinion. Um mm-hmm. He's another guy who, especially at that time, ECW was on TNN. People obviously were aware of ECW thinking it was, you know, just hardcore. And at that time, in 1999, they started doing a lot more of just hardcore because it was a lot of hardcore wrestlers. And that's why Steve Carino, that's why Steve Carino worked. Because um, he stuck out. Because he was stuck doing- out. Yeah. His style was so different because he was a lot more technical, but he wasn't afraid to get his ass kicked and bleed. Um, mm-hmm. He was perfect for that time, um, especially around that period too. Because he started, real, he he pretty much picked up the ball after RVD got injured, and when RVD was injured, Steve Carino, for me, became like the guy in ECW, because um, like. Raven was on his way out. Dudley's were gone. Um, Sandman was back. Um, and Tommy Dreamer was still there. But Steve Carino was that guy. And that's around the time like Jerry Lynn was turning heel. So Steve Carino could use that to his advantage and get some cheers. Carino knew how to work a crowd perfectly. You could get you could get the fans behind him as the underdog, or he could easily get the fans to hate him just being the smug prick that he was. I like using quotes. I, I'm the one to cut the break line for Mac on TA. I just hope they remember him saying that like they was booed. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the Alpha Macho Drive-In. If you liked that video, please click like and subscribe to our channel for more content from the drive-in. For full episodes of our podcast, you may look us up on Anchor, Spotify, or wherever your favorite podcasts are available. 
just search for Outlaw Muncho Driving. And if it's not too much trouble, would you help us out here? Spread the word, share. We would really appreciate it. Thank you. We love you. Bye.